to you about televisions. With the enormous amount of video material now available online, everything from YouTube to online catch-up services like the iPlayer and Demand 5, it's no longer good enough just to watch all this stuff on a computer monitor. The new kids on the block are internet-enabled TVs. TVs with the ability to access the sort of internet you'd normally need your computer to get at. They sound great, but are they actually any good? Well, to find out, I grabbed three promising-looking models for a bit of testing. To help me with the testing, I asked along the star of Red Dwarf and general all-round tech head Robert Llewellyn. The internet-enabled TVs I'd chosen are all HD and have Freeview built in. They have a processor inside which allows them to access the internet. Like your home computer, you'll need the usual modems and routers if you want to go online. They all have to be hardwired as they don't have wireless built in. Bit of an issue if you're not a fan of cable spaghetti around your home. And yeah. no keyboard or mouse either. You've got to control them using the TV's remote. I'm not keen on remotes. First up was a 40-inch LED backlit LCD TV from Samsung. Samsung don't use a conventional web browser, so you can't surf the net at will. Instead, they've developed their own internet software called Samsung Internet at TV. Rather like an iPhone, this uses icons or widgets which connect directly to certain sites. There's not that many widgets on there, are there? I mean, it's a very limited range at the moment. No, I mean, there's about ten, aren't there? Yeah. I, mean, there's, I mean, they say there's going to be a hundred before Christmas, but oh. I somehow doubt it. However, it was when Robert used the remote to input text that the Samsung really fell down. This is just liquid agony. I can't get to it. There we go. <laughs> that is quite simply the longest tweet I've ever said, even it's though it's not many words. I'm on internet <laughs> TV and, and tis agony. It's historic moment. I'm posting that tweet. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Network error! <laughs> but perhaps the main reason people will buy TVs like these is to view internet telly on a big screen. So that was the next task. Fortunately, we had the perfect festive test, because recently our gadget show carol singers had been out and about and we'd uploaded our film to YouTube. Well, considering it was a shot in virtually almost total darkness and has been compressed by YouTube, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I am really surprised at how good that looks. Much better than I would have thought. So, internet viewing, very capable. Before we move on, we should just check its performance as an actual TV a, with TV TV. A, a proper telly, yeah. yeah. That's pretty good, that's... Well, it looks, like, it looks like a very good, 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 good quality picture. television. Our second internet-enabled TV was a Panasonic Plasma. Now, the Panasonic also uses its own software to get itself online. It's called Viera Cast, and like the Samsung, it's all widget-based. This TV also offers a very limited number of internet applications, but at least the remote control was easier to use. Once again, we turned to our carol singers to assess internet picture quality, and the Panasonic proved itself as good as the Samsung. Let's try it on some actual TV as well. Proper telly. It's, it's very, very smooth and very clear, isn't it? The colours are beautiful. Our final TV is a 42-inch Philips LCD. Its Net TV software also provides a selection of widgets. However, the Philips offers one significant bonus. It has a web browser, which does a reasonable job of displaying most websites like you'd actually see them on a computer. You've got far more access than either of the other TVs, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. So that is better. Well, that's quite impressive. I like that. Again, the TV coped well when our YouTube clip was magnified. So the only thing left to do was check its performance as a regular TV. I think that's very good quality. I think that it's works. not bad at all. I don't think the colours are quite as good. But You're very good at telling, you see. I, I can't tell. It's a, it looks wonderful to me. Time for G-ratings, based on the TV's internet credentials. And the Samsung just scrapes two Gs. Like all three, it has a great picture, but frustratingly few internet widgets. And even these are tricky to use thanks to dismally slow text input. The Panasonic gets a slightly more comfortable 2Gs because it was easier to enter text and find your way around. And it's 3Gs for the Philips. There's still room for improvement, but at least it includes a rudimentary web browser. Now it's time.